Yo, yo, we are here. Uh, ignore the scuffed ass start. <laughs> I try, usually I try to time it, but I was not ready. Um, so we got Jinx, guys. And like, I, like, I was not lying, guys, uh, in the last vid. I, I'm serious when I say that these are going to be coming out quicker. If I have the time, uh, I will be kind of busy at work and stuff now. And also a giant assignment this weekend. But uh, other than that, oh God, this is a little loud code theme by the way uh i know i said in the last video or one of the last two that oh no more copyright music because or no copyright music because uh copyright claims but number one i'm not monetized yet because not enough uh, watch hours number two also not enough subs number two like i'm just I, this theme is goaded and i honestly don't, couldn't care enough to find a bunch of remixes right now so if this video gets claimed then i have i'll just know not to do that again and if it gets passed, then I guess that means that some Pokemon themes are not copyrighted, which is cool. Uh, we will see. But that out of the way, Jinx is great. Jinx is the GOAT. Um, controversial design. I am not a huge fan, but it has a weird charm to it. I think it's just because I like Pokemon. I like Jinx, but on paper, yeah, Jinx is a shit design. But I don't know. Something about it is kind of charming. I think the typing being unique is just cool, too. It's just really neat. Um, so that's really cool. So... They are much, much, much better. They are in, they are actually very good. Uh, better than you would think by looking at them at face value because of the move pool specifically. Um, so there is nothing here that will pop out at people as like, what the hell? Why does it have that? Why does it have that? Um, like sometimes there is that I try to cover that kind of stuff first. But in this case, there's nothing like that. And so that's great. That means I can not waste time and I can just get straight into it. So normally I would talk about random stuff and then you know kind of just go from there but what i'm actually going to start off with is the reasons why it is much better than it would look like at face value obviously at face value it's still good i mean 125 special 125 special stats uh i, meant, I don't know why i said it that way but <laughs> yeah 125 special stats 95 base speed 65 65 uh, hp defense is good um typing is not great it it, it is good offensively but it has like almost no resistances it only has actually has more now because ice has that so so something that is interesting uh here you go the uh, bug type is resisted by three less types and ice has three new resistances uh it already resisted ice so like that's there but um i, I could probably like underline these maybe or something i don't know or like print, uh, italics or something i don't know anyways um I probably can do that. Yeah, why not? Uh, I'll just make this, like this, this. Yeah, that's cool. Um, anyways, so yeah, uh, Jinx now resists Ground, Flying, Dragon, Ice, and Psychic. Um, it does have a lot of weaknesses though. It has one, two, three, four, five, six. So six relatively common weaknesses. No four times at least. But I mean, it's frail physically. So I mean, it, it, it's. 65 65 is much more usable you could actually invest in defense and like ev for certain attacks um like non-stab hits you'll be maybe living if you invest um also with stat dropping attack dropping moves which i will get into actually you know perfect segue not going to talk about the type crap not going to talk about the videos yet that's all great and very in important information but first important things that are like are the most important things with jinx uh amazing move pool uh move pool is totally what carries it um i gave it a couple of signatures not signature, but like exclusive moves, and then also a actual semi signature. Um, I don't want to say signature just yet because I'm sure that some other mons might have it, but the move is Charming Kiss. Um, so, what that is, so there's Dreamy Kiss, uh, which I'm sure some of you guys will. Oh, I actually have to add Jinx's little sprite here as well. Uh, while I did, I just what did I just do? Undo, whatever the fuck I did. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> uh, Dreamy Kiss. Dreamy Kiss, 85% accuracy move. All right, it's good. It's a good move. Uh, replace Love the Kiss. I just renamed it because I personally used to always get confused as to which kiss did what, which back when it was sweet and lovely, I would be like, which one's sweet, which one's confusion. Uh, I ended up changing Love the Kiss because confusion fucking sucks anyways. Um, and Jinx warranted a signature move or a exclusive move. Uh, in my opinion, it, it fits the Mon, and uh, it kind of needed the buff because of the middling speed tier and typing. Uh, and it's got actual, it's, it has an actual defense there now, but it's still not great. I mean, it's pretty frail. So, like, it would be kind of middling uh, without, like, scarf sets or speed boosting item uh, moves or whatnot. Um, although special defense is very high, so that's very good. But overall, 
And also all ice and resistances. Now it has a uh, one, two, hold on, wrong tab. It has five resistances now. Ground flying dragon, ice psychic. So those are actually good, solid resist resistances. Ah, English, solid resists, man. Um, but the important thing, charming kiss. So what that does is it is very self-explanatory. It is 100% accurate sleep move. So dreaming, dreamy kiss. Uh, you know, makes is 85% accurate. Charm is 100% accurate, but it's sleeping as well. And it also has charms effect, so minus two attack. That's the simplest way to put it. One PP because uh, I do not want people clicking this over and over again and setting up to plus a billion and winning. Um, because it's already pretty easy to auto win with Jigs with its moves that I'll get into literally right now. So yeah, signature, not necessarily signature. Oh, did I? There we go. Um, not necessarily signature. I'm sure, like, like maybe plus one minus. Mons that their stats and abilities on paper are good, but they need a little bit of extra oomph at level like 70, you know, like, oh crap, it's the Elite Four and this Mon is struggling to, to be viable still. Not that it's unviable, but it's still, it needs a little bit of an extra, you know, boost to just make it really worth using. Not that Jinx would be bad by level 70 without this, because it would not be at all. Actually, it would still be great because it still has the other moves and it still has Dreamy Kiss. It's just less accurate and the minus two attack is a very nice, uh, way to counteract the middling defense as well with regular stuff like regular charm uh priority uh, baby doll eyes uh freaking tearful look tickle that kind of stuff um but yeah charm and kisses is, is, is god tier great move uh, only a few other mons will get it and i will be careful with what mons get it of course because it's a great move i mean it's literally spore plus charm in one move that's that's insane um and again, it's two turns guaranteed, like all the other sleep moves for the most part, besides Pendulum Wave. Pendulum Wave is technically three turns, but because it's priority, because I really, like, Hypno is like the sleep Pokemon, so I was like, all right, let's give Hypno a, a, a real fucking sleep move. So this one does damage, it breaks sashes, I mean, it's literally the best sleep move in the game by far, and it's great. Uh, because it's Hypno, and he has bad dreams, and it's really cool. Um, Dark Void would might be similar, but uh, Dark Void would probably just be 100% accurate. That'll probably be the only and maybe a cool Z effect because Dark Rise already gonna have good stats and it's already good. Uh, so it doesn't need that boost. But tangents aside, all right. Charm and Kiss is amazing. Other great stuff that you have with Jinx. Um, lots of speed boosting moves. So uh in the late levels, I mean you have so much good stuff that I'm gonna get into in a second, but in terms of like the late game setup crap, you have Lunar Dance, which is uh Qu Quiver Dance's old effect, basically. So Quiver Dance is nerfed, quote unquote to only, it's basically a special Dragon Dance now, um, which is much more balanced because way more Mons have Quiver Dance, like almost every bug that has like some semblance of wings or even not wings, just most bug, most special bug types, if not all special bug types for the most part. And then a bunch of random like graceful Mons or that kind of stuff. So a lot more Mons have Quiver Dance. And so therefore it would be overpowered um, to boost special defense as well. Uh, and also the Z effect kind of makes up for that. Z effect gives you plus two spit F, which is great. Um, and Z effect, Z moves also bypass taunt. So you can totally use Z Quiver. Not on Jinx, obviously. The Quiver wouldn't be the weirdest thing on Jinx. It doesn't need it because it is Lunar Dance, which fits much more because it's a, you know, weird, like, singer, mystical lady, girl, queen, ice queen thing. Uh, I think it's based on a yokai? Or is that Frost Lies if they kind of... Maybe they, I think they're both based on yokais. I know Frost Lies is a bit, Jinx might be. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it based on, like, that one old... I don't know, and I'm not Googling because I don't care because fuck Jinx, uh, design-wise... I also kind of weirdly like it, and I honestly don't. I don't know why. I I don't know. I think the colors are kind of pleasing, and I think just the typing is just. I think it's just the typing is cool. I don't know. I just like Pokemon. Um, so tangent to side, all right. Lunar Dance is Quiver Dance's old effect, so that's great. Uh, the effect isn't as amazing as Quiver Dance, but you know, still healing is good, especially because it bypasses taunt. So you can totally use like Z, Z Lunar Dance to heal yourself and also get the. Uh, also, because it's kind of like in, it's kind of like akin to the old effect of Lunar Dance. So it's like, oh, it heals. Cute little soulful choice there. Otherwise, I could have just done something boring. Like, I don't even know what I would have done. Honestly, that would be, I mean, maybe defense, but that would be kind of overpowered. So, yeah. Um, Lunar Dance is god tier. I mean, look at your special stats and then think about all of them and plus one in one turn and think about your move pool. I mean, it's, it's great. It's great. Um, you can just run Sash Lunar Dance on a mod that doesn't have taunt and just go and, and kill a bunch of shit. And uh, you have Stored Power and Enchantment and Psycho Shift, which uh, is a Z move, uh, will give you plus one to all of your stats. So uh, I will talk about Stored Power at the end because Stored Power is freaking amazing. 
but first I will talk about the other setup moves. So you have so you have Lunar Dance, uh, you have Enchantment, which goes great with uh, Dreamy Kiss and then at level 70 Charming Kiss. Um, Enchantment is Geomancy's old effect, but it's plus one speed only as a balance. Um, because, uh, I mean, plus two speed was the, what put it over the top, in my opinion, at least. Uh, plus one speed is much more reasonable, and it's still great. Um, I mean, I'm relatively careful with, with Gets It. Relatively. Um, Jinx is a good contender for it. It kind of needs it, and it also makes a lot of sense. And so she has enchantment. And that gives her plus one speed. And 95 base speed is not great on its own, but with a Scarf or a plus, uh, plus one speed, it is much, much more respectable and a much, uh, much higher. So let's put this at uh, Jolly. And I'm at 475, so that's a very good number to hit. Um, and with a neutral nature, you're still at 473. If you have zero speed IVs, let's say you have a really shitty Jinx with zero speed IVs, you're still outspeeding a lot of shit. You know, so my point is at plus one speed, you're really outspeeding most things you need to outspeed. Um, and you also have priority um, early game. You know, like everything, literally everything for the most part is like very few months that they'll get priority um, <laughs> moves. I think every moment mom should have like at least one, because even like. Yeah, everyone should have at least one. But uh, there's a couple that might not. I think, like, like, maybe Stack Attacker won't. Because the Solo Rock feels weird. And there's no other priority moves that did it. So yeah, like Stack Attacker. But there's not really many other mods that won't have priority um, of some form. So, as I was saying, um, Psycho Shift, Enchantment. Yeah, Enchantment's great. Um, you can run, like, Charming Kiss plus power herb enchantment which is great or so basically the way that charming kiss works is you get one turn of sleep if you're faster you get two turns of sleep if you're slower um i've said this and literally every time i talk about sleep but again i'm not going to expect for that every viewer has watched every single video and listened to every single second and, and memorized every single i mean you know i have no problem repeating myself um and i'm sure those of you who have internalized it by now or not i don't don't mind me uh, covering it a little bit more so yes you get two turns of sleep fully if you're slower um 95 speed is a very crowded speed tier. Oh, that also reminds me I have to update the speed tier guide. Also, yeah, um, if you guys haven't seen this yet, I've been I have this now, it's really fucking cool. Um, you can just see all the speed tiers in a hack. Um, and I'm updating it as I go. So I gotta add uh I didn't change any other speeds. I just changed I just added Jinx and Switch so I gotta add them on there. I could do it as I talk. It's not that's not bad. Um so yeah, enchantment's great. Um you can use a sleep move. I don't want to look up for 65. I know that's an NFE, so we gotta update the count on that. Should be times five now. Five of these motherfuckers. And then we got Jinx, who is a fully evolved, so they go on the left because they're actually relevant. Rather, oh, actually, you know, I could quickly just talk about the um, NFE rules here. Basically, it says it here, but if you see some NFEs up here, it's because they're viable ones. They're ones that evolve with gems and are therefore, in, uh, besides uh, Ben and Nat, I think I put them on the left. No, actually, now it's consistent. Yeah, only gem evolutions are on the left, basically. So if it evolves with a gem, meaning the, all the Pokemon evolved with gems are either branch evos like that needed it just to make sense to evolve, or are um, a violate viable uh, intended, like as an option. Maybe not the best option, but they're intended to be like an option for you to use. Um, so that's why there's shit like, I don't know, it's the first NFE I can spot. Uh, Nido Reno, although he is actually not a gem evo because they're not pseudos, but pseudos will be gem evos. Semi pseudos, I could probably make those all gem evos just for consistency. I will look into that after this video. Um, anyways, where is Jinx again? 95. As you can see, 95 is a pretty crowded tier, so. I um, mean, it will be more crowded as we go on. Um, it's not a bad thing necessarily, but. Oh, crap, I have to up the count. Ugh, why does it lag when I do that? Come on. Sorry, y'all. I should have done this beforehand, but I don't want to forget because I know I'm going to forget otherwise. Uh... Because this is new, so I haven't like internalized this in my process or whatever yet. Um, so yeah, really cool stuff. Um, enchantments got tier, plus one C plus two specials. Uh, two Lunar Dances is stronger technically, but that's two Lunar Dances. So basically what I was trying to say is you can use like Sash Charming Kiss, for example, um, if they don't have Taunt or something, and then or any other way to stop your setup or any other way to break your Sash, which they might uh, very well have a lot of ways to break your Sash. But, if the conditions are right, you can use Sash, Charming Kiss, and then get off a... Uh, I love Ice Path, and it's such nice background music. Um, I don't know why that came out of my head. <laughs> uh, Lunar Dance and Enchantment. I was saying that you can be faster and use Power of Enchantment in the one turn that you have free, or you can use Sash into... And then click... Uh, you can use Sash, Charming Kiss, and then use Lunar Dance twice and get plus two special attack, special defense, and speed. And you could even use... Um, uh, never mind, you can't use Sash and 
Z move at the same time. I am slow. Um, you can already, there's like, if you're really smart and intuitive, you can strategize very well with your items and moves and EV spreads and whatnot and really make it work. Um, specific conditions, you can set them up uh, because again, AI doesn't switch. So you can, even if, even with all the anti setup and the wall break and shit that I got and the setup and reverse sweep shit that I'm going to put in, it, it still doesn't change the fact that it's still pretty easy to, to cheese the Pokemon AI no matter what you do, no matter how good I make them or how many, no matter how many moves I give them and sets I give them with the specific intention to combat the shitty AI, like specific moves that the AI abuses better, items that the AI abuses better, abilities that the AI abuses better, etc. Um, still doesn't change the fact that the AI is bad. Um, that being said, uh, Trauma Kiss is, is amazing, like I said. Dreamy Kiss does the trick as well. You can like do Dreamy Kiss plus Nasty Plot or Dreamy Kiss plus Calm Mind. Those are both great too. Obviously, Lunar Dance is a strict upgrade over Calm Mind. Although technically Calm Mind has more PP, I believe Calm Mind I made three. Or maybe it's still two. No, no. Yeah, Calm Mind, Meditate. The, the moves that give you plus one attack and defense of some kind, you know, meaning Meditate, Calm Mind, Bulk Up, Coil, etc., have three PP. Um, so you can get plus three on those. So it's actually technically situationally better than um, like Nasty Potter or Lunar Dance, because Lunar Dance only has two, but it would be really dependent on what the hell you're, you're doing. Um, and also it's reteachable, which is useful. So like I was saying, great setup with that. Um, enchantment is great. So basically what I was trying to get into is sleep plus the setup is great. It's consistent. So you don't have to worry about them waking up on your face. You can 100% know when they're going to wake up. Otherwise you have uh, Z Psycho Shift. As more setup. So Z Cycle Shift gives you well Cycle Shift not only does it swapped uh, swap uh excuse me status as well, which is just useful. Um it also what is the one that swaps all stats? That was a heart swap, which I changed to fair. Yeah, yeah. So I get them confused sometimes. Uh Cycle Shift passes status, which is not amazing. Um, although you could use that with like pre-statusing your mon before battle, which is cheesy, but like it's useful for sure. Um, so that's cool, um, but mostly you're using it for the Z move. Um, and what that does is it gives you obviously plus one all stats. That makes you much bulkier on both ends. It makes you much stronger, and it makes you uh, much faster, like I covered earlier. And with five uh, uh, stat boosts, you get 120 base power, stored power instantly. So stored power has been changed. I'm sure you guys probably noticed by now, and some of the changed gods. But again, I want to cover it anyways. Three PP plus one special attack each time you use it. Amazing. Um, it's literally I had to make a three PP because otherwise you would just sweep if they didn't have a dark type or something. Like you would, they would, you would just sweep every time. And power trip would be even worse because there's no immunities to that, so um, it would get out of hand. So three PP is very fair. You can only kill three mons at once with most with it. It makes it very balanced because it's still a great option to have. Um, hence why mons learn it usually only when they have set up crap. Um, so yeah, stored power becomes 120 base power, stab, move. You get another plus one special attack. On the second use, you will, you will be 140 base power, plus two special attack. The third use, you'll be 160 base power, and... Wait, I cannot do math, sorry. First use, 120 base power, plus one special attack. Second use, 140 base power, plus two special attack. Third use, 160 base power, plus two special attack. I wasn't wrong. Yeah, that, that's, that's correct. So... That's great. I mean, I don't even have, I don't, do I have to explain why that's good. It's good, man. Um, and then you have plus special attack. You can use other shit afterwards too. You can use draining kiss for HP. You can use uh, which is very low base power, but it heals a lot. So um, and at plus special attack, you can you know get a lot of HP back if you want. Uh, alternatively, you can just do um, oh, one of the best things actually is uh, so I'll, now I'll touch on serene grace stuff a little bit uh, because I think I've covered all this stuff. Uh, sure, cold. Literally, these moves are memes, man. Like they're not even worth using with one PP, but it, I mean, they are. Here's my status on them. Uh, they are good for post game really only or specific league sweeping strategies because you only get them for the league anyways. These level 100, um, and you can relearn at the league. So you can once you, basically the second you get access to these moves is also when you get access to relearner, um, which is good because that lets you um, tailor whether or not you need a one hit KO move just a one time bloom this mom is dead no matter what it is um it's situational but it is good in certain situations and it's kind of shit in other situations because you can just run better moves that do more things and have more than one pp so niche option but good uh still good um you just gotta plan when you use it so for example oh i'm fighting rainbow rocket and they have a kyogre you know instead of trying to freeze dry specs kill it you can just click sheer cold 
you can move to it around circle and just just insta insta kill something. Uh, especially with Rainbow Rocket, that's really useful because a lot of the box art OP shit. Um, <laughs> imagine uh, somebody freaking sheer holding Giovanni's Mega Bo Two Y, which is going to be um, one of the hot, strongest Pokemon in the game, if not the strongest Pokemon in the game. Uh, unusable, obviously, uh, just because it's the final boss of the game. Uh, technically, um, if you don't count like myself insert and other stuff. But anyways. Which might be honestly equal power. I don't know. I think Giovanni should probably be the strongest just because of soul. Oh, side tangents. I'm sorry, guys. Um, yeah, Revelation Dance. So, Revelation Dance is, is godlike. Serene Grace has tons of great stuff that I'll cover, but the most important one is uh, Revelation Dance. Um, that becomes Ice type with Jinx. Uh, because uh, obviously I, it, it goes to the primary typing, so I can just change the primary typing in files. It has no other, it has no other impact. So, for example, uh, other Revelation Dance mods, I'm pretty sure I already did that with. Blossom is pure grass, doesn't matter. Uh, and also has Serene Grace, so you, Blossom also has the 100% special attack boost. Other mods will have that too, it's really cool. Uh, Oricorio itself will actually have that, which is cool. Uh, Marowak becomes Ghost, for example. Um, I believe they used to be Fire Ghost, technically, but it, that doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, great stuff here. Um, plus one special attack, guaranteed. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and that is super strong. 90 base power, as strong as Ice Beam. And Again, you get plus one special attack. So you can use that in con in conjunction with store power. And like, for example, here's a, here's this theoretical moveset. Charming Kiss, uh, Enchantment slash Lunar Dance, slash Psycho Shift, slash Nasty Plot, whatever setup you want. Literally, Charming Kiss, setup move, Revelation Dance, store power. Boom. I mean, unless they have like a bunch of Wartime's resists, you're, you're probably, or like a mon obviously it's easier said than done. It's much easier said than done uh, because you are frail and you don't have that great resistance, but it's still, situationally, you can easily sweep uh, a lot of fights, um, which is impressive because a lot of things have trouble sweeping now, uh, unless you're smart, which, yeah. Um, so, also, let me fix this facing or whatever it's called. So, ugh, I hate when it does this. No, that's down there. I'm blind. Yeah, right there. I, I knew that. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, Serene Grace, Revelation Dance, 100% special attack boost with Serene Grace. Otherwise, it's 50%, which is still good. That's still very useful and good. But of course, uh, you want the consistency with Serene Grace. Um, otherwise, you have. So, so I'll quickly cover Dry Skin. So, I actually initially had Refrigerate on them, and I was going to give them. Well, obviously, they had Hyper Voice. I was, uh, you know, they're, they're singers. Like, they're kind of based on singing a little bit. So, I was going to give them, you know, Serenade. Uh, harmonize, swift, you know, typical refrigerate stuff. Um, boom burst potentially, maybe, and it would be really strong. But there, uh, when, like I said, when I did all of the mon planning and I planned it all the ice, you know, include every type of every mon and every single. Oh, fun fact um, if you've gotten this far, uh, I have managed to put every single possible type combination at least once in the game. Um, it's not as stupid as you might think in your head because. A lot of those weird combos are furfru forms, which are normals plus uh, a type, uh, and minior, which is rock plus a type. Um, so that fills out a lot of the weird combos. Um, but a lot of the other weird combos uh, are existing, and uh, and they are actually pretty pretty fucking logical. I'm really proud with how uh, how I managed to work that out. But we will get to those when we get to those. It's just something to to, to note. I think you guys can. It'd be kind of cool if you could dare. It's like, wait, what the fuck is the I don't know. I mean, I don't want to give you any obvious weird type combos, but there are weird ones. And when I say every type combo, I mean every type combo in Gen 7, meaning, oh, like, technically Psychic Poison exists because Galas Lobo. No, I mean every single possible type combination exists in this hack, specifically. Um, at least once on at least one Pokemon, one usable Pokemon, which is really cool. Um, that being said, and, and Jinx is actually unique in that sense. It's, it's I Psychic. Obviously, that existed before, but it's unique in that it's the only mom with a type, uh, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, super cool stuff. Uh, Jinx is great. Revelation Dance, like I said, um, is great on it. Uh, I, I was going to talk about. Uh, I was going to talk about. Uh, so here's what I'm going to mention: Dry Skin's utility, and then also the logic. Uh, but basically, I chose not to do Refrigerate because it overlaps too much. Even though technically it's unique that it's an Ice Psychic, so like no matter what, it wouldn't overlap. Overlap, but it's just kind of. I feel like I, I noticed that I was giving it to a lot of Ice types, and I was like, this is kind of boring, you know? Like let me let me spice it up a little bit. And, just keep keep dry skin, especially because it's frail physically, so it gives a lot of defensive utility and uh, it makes it very viable under rain, which is super cool. Uh, you know, you can run like sub sets under rain with dry skin and get the healing each turn. It's really neat. 
So that, I just like that a lot. I, I, also, I also initially thought that dry skin made no sense logically, um, which is the main reason I booted it for refrigerate. Um, but I read Smoochum's entries and it talks about how their lips um, like need moisture. Like literally one of their, uh, like one of their entries talks about it. Literally only one. Uh, where is it? Yeah, Smoochum's lips are kept moist by his daily application of sap. Um, so logic is um what was i saying logic is um uh, god i completely lost my train of thought i was talking about dry skin oh yeah dry skin i'm gonna go on my dry skin tangent guys i'm sorry but i have to because fuck this ability and fuck the logic of it um i hate it i hate how inconsistent they are with giving it so the name is so fucking weird it's not even at first i thought okay it's probably just a weird japanese translation shit it probably was something more reasonable in japanese nope it's still dry skin dude what 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 real life animals or or creatures need their skin to be wet and appreciate it and then when they dry out they're hurt amphibians man amphibians it's fucking frogs okay frogs literally that's why toxic has it toxic makes sense thumbs up parasect thumbs up for the most part because it lives in damp areas i i see it um, i can totally see like parasect going out in the sun and being like oh fuck my skin is not moist so i am in pain jinx was weird but now that i know that the lips specifically are why it has dry skin i think it's kind of funny and i was willing to let it slide because it already had the ability so i'm willing to keep it heliolisk heliolisk has dry skin what why does he also why did they not give dry skin to any fucking and other amphibian pokemon i mean it's literally like this this ability I, if i could if i wanted to i could rename it amphibious and it would make sense because that's what it is that's what it's describing um it's not it's such a weird name because it implies that their skin is like dry naturally which it isn't true their skin is moist like moist skin would make more sense you know or wet skin or or, or literally just hydration if hydration had this effect on top of the age, whatever the point is it's or, or heat sensitive or something i don't know that's a dumb name but you know something implying that they need to be moist all right because that's what the ability is they need to be moist all right so when people think oh like i can give this desert animal dry skin because they live in a desert instead of dry why would a pokemon that lives in the fucking sun fucking helios i hate that they gave helios dry skin it's such an oversight it's not even based on an amphibian if it was based on an amphibian i'd give it like okay for example i'm considering giving uh, actually no i've already solidified that's a lot of we'll have it because it's technically a salamander and it lives in like caves so even though it's a fire type whatever also it's just cool so i'm willing to make the exception there because it's an amphibian but it's a fucking basilisk it's a, that's a reptile it, it's it's the generator pokemon it has a sun-shaped neck for real it evolves with a sunstone why why would it look at the uh, bathing in the sun why would it hurt itself by basking in the sun i hate it solar power also hurts you but it's because you're drawing power you're kind of i guess i interpret it as like you're too strong you know uh sort of so that i can give a pass but what the fuck is is dry skin doing on a fucking sun bathing reptile generator i hate it god so unrelated but that, that pisses me off it, it's and then people say dumb shit about dry skin and it's like dude no it's it, think about it for two seconds and you'll realize why am i getting so heated <laughs> i love how i just make up fake arguments in these uh, videos hope you guys find them entertaining back on topic jinx dry skin is very useful is my point all right useful in the rain useful just to have a free switch in on a pretty frail physically pokemon it's just useful to be able to switch it on switch it in all rain boosted swift swim liquidation oh pfft. give me hp hp isn't really the benefit it's mostly just a free switch uh, which again is useful and also they have five resistances now which is very useful so that's the utility of dry skin. And then in terms of um, getting a fire weakness, a lot of people think that it just gives you weakness to fire like Fluffy. It does not. It makes fire moves do 25% more. So who the fuck cares? Oh no, fire moves are doing 20% more. Like, yeah, I guess like especially it's kind of a downside, but like just switch the ability off. All you have to do is literally, basically what, what, what it is is you're always gonna be running Serene Grace until you know that a Pokemon, that, so I, if you're using the docks, this Pokemon has a water type move. I need my drinks to fight it. Give it dry skin. I have a rain team. Give it dry skin, etc. Otherwise, run serene grace. Simple as that. Um, I like Pokemon with abilities like that because it's kind of straightforward and it kind of makes the choice paralysis uh, <laughs> better. That doesn't mean that I dislike when they have two awesome abilities. That's what I opt. That's what I shoot for. But in cases where it's like a situational but good ability and then just a regular ability, I like that too. Like all the levitate ones, for example, it's always going to be situational, but it's good. It's good to have that option with the infinite ability capsules. So um you know if you know what you're doing and use it to your advantage otherwise I mean, 
just keep Syringa all the time if you just want to Unga shit. I don't know, man. It's up to you. Play how you want. Um, that being said, uh, like I said, you have Revelation Dance, which is the same base power as Ice Beam. Otherwise, you have Glacy. So Ice Ice moves also are buffed. Um, so another way I buffed Ice types on top of the buffed uh, resistances and whatnot, and better stats overall. Um, there are a lot of Ice moves that are pretty much exclusive to Ice types. Um, Aurora Beam is given to some other mons, but all Ice types, all special Ice types, are have it, have it for sure, um, and that's great. It's ice type mystical fire, uh, physical mystical fire. Physical type dropping, let's go fire, I should say. Um, freeze dry, a lot of hacks are like, oh, let's make freeze dry a better ice beam, which is not a terrible idea, but we have frost breath for that. And frost breath with the crit effect is 98 base power overall, which is almost just like earthquake level power. And it bypasses stat drops. So a really cool thing you can do, you can do with Jinx specifically and other uh, mons with these 100% crit moves, which are, uh, there are two other variants of this move. There is Arrow Blast and Heat Wave are both 5 PP, 100% accurate, 65 base power, crit moves, uh, which is cool. Um, and one things you can do, one really cool thing you can do with those moves is you can use a stat dropping move and then proceed to ignore it with a critical hit. So for example, Jinx can click Cycle Boost, drop a special attack by two, 150 base power, 100% accurate. I mean, it's great. You can also just use Cycle Boost twice in a row and you get a net base power of 100 into 112, 113, which is good. I mean, that's 100% accurate, just strong. You can just use it twice in a row. Otherwise, um, you know, use a uh, cycle boost into frost breath, and what that does is it crits and ignores your stat drops, uh, and so you're getting the full power, which is really good. Uh, so you can use like cycle boost twice and then just spam frost breath uh, until you have to switch out for whatever the fuck you're fighting. Really cool stuff there. Um, also, you have, um, like I said, freeze dry uh, for ice guys and a frost breath. So you have those. So basically, you're either if you're choosing. I think freeze dry is still much worth it over ice beam in most cases, unless the mon is an ice type that has coverage, really good coverage for uh, waters, um, which Jinx technically has. Yes, I understand. I gave them thunderbolt. I gave them thunder. I gave them charge beam. But freeze dry has the added effect of being super effective on like part flying and part. Um, water mons and whatnot um so like which which is very useful uh, like groundwater mons for guys that big use of freeze dry that's why like fucking mammal runs freeze drying competitive even though it has 80 base special attack or actually sorry 70 base special attack and 70 base power move it still runs freeze dry because it's good for bulky waters um and yeah obviously if mammals went well charger would probably run that instead but it's still useful to smack water grounds and other shit um so and which mammals might actually might get wild charge now but uh very unrelated, you guys. I'm sorry for these all these tangents, but um, let me get rid of this control F. It's ugly. Um, point being, you have really ice stat, right? Uh, so Revelation Dance isn't automatically your best one, but like I would say, you're probably gonna want the Revelation Dance effect over the Frost Breath, which is why I made it a higher level because yeah, Frost Breath is eight base power stronger and bypasses stat drops and also stat uh, boosts of the opponent, which is really useful. Especially something you could do is like, oh, there's a totem at level 44 or level 43. Let me use Frost Breath and then reteach and then teach Revelation Dance after the totem's over, which is cool. That's a cool thing you can do um, if you're smart with it. Um, but that being said, you have. Really good options there, so you can really, it's, it's honestly a hard pick between Freeze Dry, Frost Breath, and Revelation Dance, but even, even if you just go in order, I mean, you're still getting good leverage, you're still using them for a good 10 or 5 levels, um, which is neat. Uh, and then Glaciate is great. Uh, minus 2 speed, 110 base power, it's 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 excellent, it's an excellent move. Um, it is sort of like Blizzard, but it is 10 base power, weaker and power percent, more accurate, and instead of having a 10% freeze chance, it has a guaranteed chance to lower speed by 2, and it's only on Ice Mons only ice I, I cannot think of a single non ice type that would get it um i really can't think of one maybe one but it would be like an obvious one you know that like makes sense um so definitely great same thing with freezer run freezer run is excellent so is uh icebreaker which is the physical variant of this it's from freeze shark and iceburn so yeah you can see right here uh, it doesn't re not relevant for jinx icebreaker but uh freezer burn is very relevant uh what that is is uh, another power i don't move so it actually has two valuable power herb options uh, which is really cool um and you can just burn them you get 180 power 180 power which is like z move equivalent so basically you're using your power herb which is like pseudo z move um and then you're um you could also do like something interesting you could try like a, a gimmicky like charming kiss into freezer burn move set you know you could experiment with stuff here you got a lot of options um also there's simple shit you can just fucking run nasty plot sash with dual priority you know uh, or like max spadef, max special attack, or max HP, max special attack, 
or you know, max if he max special defense with nasty plot or calm mind and priority. You don't even need speed investment with the priority moves. So, you know, and shockwave as I said, you could run all three. You could run three priority moves in one attack. You know, if you really wanted to, it really just depends. And the beautiful thing is, you can customize your EV spread and your TMs and tutors for every single battle. The only thing you are going to have to worry about is your level up moves and which ones you forget. Otherwise, you have full freedom. It's it's excellent. You can just tailor your EV spreads. Um, and again, 65 base defense is not stellar, but it is good when you consider all of the utility it has with the attack drop stuff. Um, also, ZT to dance, plus to its special attack for mid game. Cool little pseudo nasty plot, which is like 10 levels early, and you actually get the nasty plot at the end, which is cool. And it bypasses taunt. So that's cool. Um, flatter top theory is a fun. It's, it's a cool combo. I like giving shit now. I think top theory fits Jinx just because she's like kind of mischievous looking. I don't know. It's just cool. Uh, and it gives her more utility. Haze as well for totems. Um, and also just for stopping stat boosts in general, but Topsy Terry specifically is excellent because it reverses them, so it's even better. Uh, you can reverse, you can basically just like totally stop a sweep easily. Um, also great with totems. And then Flatter is just kind of funny. You can use Flatter, get them plus two special attack, and then Topsy Terry and their minus two special attack. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, there's a couple other things, but like it's not too mind blowing. It's just, I mean, a great coverage. You've got, oh, oh, Serene Grace stuff. That's what I want to talk about, and then I'll be done. Yeah, Serene Grace stuff. So I talked about all the setup, talked about all the amazing, great, cool stuff. But Serene Grace abuse outside of Revelation Dance. So by level up, Serene Grace um, moves, uh, moves that appreciate Serene Grace existence is Confusion. We'll have a 100% chance to confuse. So that's cool, um, consistent. Um, and it stays. Confusion is also consistently lasting a certain amount of turns. So the only RNG is, is there a one or two chance they're going to hit themselves? I don't like Confusion as a mechanic. I would remove it, but I think a couple moves doing it is cool. Uh, I might eventually like maybe make signature moves out of like the other Confusional Fiction moves like Supersonic, but I like how Supersonic and Tito Dance are pl uh, plus two special attack, like Z moves. I like that, so I'll probably keep it that way. Those moves, you're basically using, I think actually most, if not all of the Confusion Edition moves are plus two special attack Z moves, so you're basically just using them for uh, the utility of the but special attack was not for actually confusing them because an entire moveslot dedicated to a one in three chance to hit themselves is, is not good. They nerfed the shit of Parafusion, as they should have. Um, so, I have yeah, it's a good thing they did that. Um, although you technically could Parafuse shit, you could run like Thunder Wave, T Z Teeter Dance into Extra Sensory, and um, this is actually the next move up in the Serene Grace viability. So, that works out perfectly. So, Extra Sensory has a 60% chance to Ah, English. 60% flinch rate with the Serene Grace active, uh, which is insane. Uh, 95 base speed. You can just, you can, if you really want it to, like, that will always make, like, even without all this love and care I put into, like, the cool, unique strategies it has, I could, you could literally, like, I could just say, oh man, uh, scarf, flinch move, what more do you need? Usable, good speed tier, or relatively solid speed tier, flinch move, Serene Grace. That's all you need, really. Like, you can flinch shit down. Um, it's not skill based at all, but. It is good nonetheless. Um, if you are facing against it, you can easily bypass it. You have so many priority moves. You have first impression and sucker punch TMs, both of which are super effective and will fucking shit on Jinx. Um, if you get flinched out by a Jinx, you did not prepare. I'm sorry. Um, but in terms of the player using it, yeah, you can totally just slap a scarf on your Jinx and just click extra sensory a bunch and flinch them to death. That actually makes extra sensory potentially viable over psychic, despite being uh, 90 base power versus 75 base power um, because of the flinch rate, which is really neat. Um, psychic has a 50% special defense drop chance with Serene Grace, which is very solid. Um, and then Ice Beam has 20% freeze rate. For, uh, freeze Dry has a 20% freeze rate, and Blizzard has a 20% freeze rate, which is stupid, but it is what it is. I, don't, I think that's the reason they've never given an Ice type Serene Grace, but they do have mods with Ice Beam and Serene Grace, like Blissey, so. And that's the mod that'll be clicking that shit the whole fucking game, trying to freeze you down, so. In competitive, at least. Um, so. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, Jinx and Alolan Nantos right now are currently the only uh, Serene Grace Ice types. But there are, of course, other Serene Grace ones that get Ice Punch and Ice Beam and shit. Of tons of ones that will get that, so it doesn't matter. Um, sorry, I'm a little ranty. Um, I want to quickly finish covering the, uh, the Serene Grace stuff. So, you have freeze chances, like I said. Side Shock has no added effect. The reason you use Side Shock is, number one, because it hits physical defense, which is great, and number two, it's 95 base power, over 90 base power for Psychic, so that's a really good you move for other. I would say Jinx can go either way. It depends on what you're fighting, uh, but normally I would say Side Shock is probably better. Um, the only benefit is that Side Psychic is reteachable, teachables, that Side Shock is not. So if you want to like tailor your moveset for a meme set for a specific trainer, you can 
delete side shock annoying, you'll have psychic as the TM, which is maybe not as strong, but you know, it's still fine. Um, Charm befriend minus two attack, minus two special attack, just good utility. Barrier, um, also, I forgot that. Yeah, that's another setup I forgot to cover. It's just, it's nice. It's early on, relatively for setup moves. It's just nice to have. Uh, it, you can totally do like stored power, barrier. You could totally run like Charming Kiss, Barrier, Enchantment, slash Lunar Dance, stored power set if you wanted to. Uh, if you know that you don't need Revelation Dance for that fight. Um, it's cool stuff. Um, for sure, cool stuff. Um, like I said, Revelation Dance has this thing. Uh, Moonblast. Oh, okay. I'll cover TMs in a second. Uh, those are those are, very, those are a lot of Serene Grace stuff. But uh, level up moves. Moonblast has a 60% chance to drop special attack with um, Serene Grace, which is really useful. Um... And that might be it. By level up. Yes, that is all the certain increases by level up. So by TM, you have a lot. So Ominous Wind has a 30% chance to boost all your stats by one. That's great. Um, you could even use that with stored power. I wouldn't recommend fishing for that. But if you want to be uh, that guy, then go, or that guy or girl, then go ahead. Um, or other. I always say, like, I, I'm so used to saying guy. And then I'm like, wait, let me be inclusive and say girl. And I'm like, wait, let me be even more inclusive and say they. But it's like, dude, most of my audience is. Most of my hack audience is most likely men because, uh, and that's uh, a shout out to the girls out there that are into this Pokemon shit. It's, it's super cool. I'm not like one of those guys like, oh, video games, girls only or anything. I just, it's a fact that at least most like po tubers, I'm not, I'm not a fucking Poketuber. I just make this shit because I'm making my hack and I want to info dump about the mons <laughs> instead of typing annoying 500 word limited space blurbs every time that was so annoying i'm so happy i don't have to do it anymore I, I dreaded doing it every time guys i really did this is so much more fun for me um i don't care if the videos are long i just want to talk about pokemon if you guys want to listen that's awesome so back on topic i'm just win 30 percent omni boost right then you've got signal beam which has a 50 percent chance to boost special attack with serene grace um dazzling gleam has the same uh these are actually the same move just different types essentially like in terms of effect uh 50% chance of a special attack, 25% normally, 25% normally, ADB is power, both of them, so that's really useful. Um, for Jinx, and also just for other Soaring Grace Bonds and other Pokemon in general, just to have it. Um, Water Pulse and Ominous Wind both have a 30% chance to boost, special, uh, boost all your stats by one, so that is excellent. Uh, Shockwave is power already. Um, uh, another cool thing that they don't have anymore is a uh, refriger store refrigerate. I thought that was super funny. Because it's snore is 100 flinch right now, so you could like rest, uh, and then just click refrigerate snore twice with uh, a 72 raise power move that always flinches tw two times, and then you have to rest again. So it's not, it's not like game breaking or anything, but it's definitely useful. Uh, you could totally do work with it, uh, but it's it's fine. They still have snore out of logic because I'm, you know, she's a human, so she can totally snore. I've been a lot less because of the buff to it. Like the, I've been not giving it to every mon, like it used to be. Um, I've been giving it to ones that really either make sense, like they're either sound based or they're like very mammalian, like typical mammals that you would expect to snore, that kind of thing. Um, and I just think that Jinx snoring is kind of funny. Um, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. What else with Serene Grace? There's a little bit of a gap here. Um, that's Gleam, like I said. Oh, Weather Ball. Weather Ball is really cool. So, Weather Ball, like I said, it works with rain dry skin sets and also just any other. You can use Rock Weather Ball or. Uh, fire weather ball if you want and even ice weather ball early game um because it's strong uh you know it's your strongest ice move technically um and another thing that weather ball is cool with is it becomes 90 base power and it drops so yes i nerfed the base power because it's much earlier and because fucking everything that special gets it like almost every special attacker if not every special attacker gets weather ball now so that's another reason i have to nerf the power uh on just out of principle but i also give it a special defense drop uh half the time so that already i would say is better than 50 base power overall so that's really cool. Um, and that becomes 100% as much with Serene Grace is my point. So you can run uh, Ice, Weather Ball, and drop Special Defense 100% of the time as like a pseudo revelation dance for like fucking literally at the beginning of the game. You get it at like between 21, 23, 25. You get it before Totem Rock went it. So uh, that's really awesome. Um, like I said, it's up to good with Dry Skin, but that doesn't Serene Grace. I need to get back on topic. Dry, uh, Dark Pulse, sorry. Dark Pulse. Uh, you can actually also do a cool set with like Charming Kiss and Dark Pulse because of sleep turns. Uh, you will get the Nightmare inflicted and do more damage if you wanted. Um, kind of a niche thing, but it's cool nonetheless. Uh, and that has a 40% flinch rate. Uh, Shadow Ball has a 40% special defense rate. Ah, English. Special defense drop rate. 
with um, Serene Grace, which is great. Um, otherwise, what else? I think there's only a few more left. Uh, Aura Sphere, I believe, is special defense as well. Let me confirm. It should be 25% special defense shot rate, if I remember. No, 20%. So, yeah, 40%. Same as Shadow Ball. Just stronger. Um, T-Bolt. 20% para? Did I make... I, oh, yeah. Here's something that you guys might not have noticed because I did this uh, kind of behind the scenes. I'm sure some of you, when I first did the move changes... Again, I've been changing little shit a bunch. But a really important one... Um, I stupidly made a bunch of fucking electric and fire type moves have way too high flinch and burn rates. Sorry, para and burn rates. Not really thinking about how fucking stupid that is and how frustrating that would be in practice. So T-Bolt back to 10%, much more balanced. Um, Thunder stays at 30% because, yeah, um, you have this, which always does its effect. Um, so there's no electric move. The discharge uh, is back to 30. And Power Plume, is, which is Lava Plume, just for non-Lava Mons now, uh, is a... Uh, 30% as well. So those used to be 35 or even 40 maybe, and then I made like T-Bolt 20, and it was like like staggered up, and Ice Punch was 15. And it, it's chaotic as fuck, and I don't want people to just have to worry about that as much as they already do. 10% is already fucking a lot, especially for Burn. Burn is bad. T-Bolt is still bad, but Burn, man, I don't know what I was thinking, given like every fucking fire move a 20% chance to burn or higher. Like, that's so toxic and stupid. Um, so Flamethrower is back to 10 but, uh, and a lot of these, like, strong fire moves actually don't have burn rates at all, like Heat Wave and Overheat. Actually, Overheat does, sorry. Uh, fire Vortex, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, more, I know, uh, Blast Burn, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. And Eruption, but that's not very highly distributed still. It's on more mods, but not a lot of mods still. Um, out of principle. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Um, Flamethrower, that, that should be, that should be 10. That's just me forgetting to edit the second instance of it. I'm pretty sure I literally had the other one at 10% already. Yep, I did. <laughs> so I just, that's, that happens sometimes, guys. You know, you forget to do the other one. Um, I assure you it's all good in game, though, for sure. I definitely did that. Um, that's always my first priority because that's more important. Um, sorry, I am very sidetracked. Uh, Mystical Fire is cool fire coverage, by the way. Um, it's a little bit of a reach, but I mean, she's magic. She can summon fire with magic. It's fine. Um, she's she's cool. I think she can do it. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. In case you guys are wondering, if you guys are ever stalking the sheet and you notice I have these moves copy-pasted onto a monster, and so you're like, what the fuck? Why is Jinx getting Iron Defense and Rock Slide and mm, all these crazy moves? It's not actually getting those moves. It's because that's what I use. I used to be an idiot and just manually type them all out and then manually go like this for each color and that took forever and then i was wait why don't i just do it this way it's so much more efficient so that's what i started doing uh level of moves i can't really do that with though um, i have to do those manually um that being said energy ball sped f drop rate i'm not even going to tell you the rates but they're basically all of these moves that have the rates are like 20 to 30 percent all of them so just just keep that in mind all right they're all 20 to 30 percent none of them are higher than lower when i cover these besides ice beam and bolt obviously so energy ball sped f drop really high chance i believe it should be about 50 uh with serene grace uh like i said weather ball's great 100 percent chance um then have bucket flinch shit but like you have extra entry. i just have it there because it used to have it and it makes sense so i kept it um because it's stab and stuff uh same with i punch but and drain punch oh, you guys know the deal i don't have to explain that um Play rough could be niche because it was serving grace. It'll always lower attack, but like, just use a roar beam or some shit. You know, no, I don't know why you would use play rough off your 50 base attack, but you know, you, you could as a TM if you really wanted to. Um, for a very niche battle, like, oh, I want to break this month's sash and then also break its attack to live a hit. You know, it's it's strategic give it as a TM, so that's cool. That's why I threw it on there. Um, also, because it makes sense. Um, Thunder 60% chance to paralyze. Blizzard, like I said, the 20% burn freeze rate, focus blast, very high, sped F drop rate, and that's about it for Serving Grace. Tons of great stuff, like I said. Um, super fun mons. Super, super huge blow up, honestly. I mean, they're great. Um, super great mons. I think I covered literally everything. Um, early game, we have like good utility shit, like the basic utility shit, you know, playing as Bibidola is Encore Disable, that kind of good stuff. Psychic Terrain for Hala, blah, 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 blah. Uh, cool coverage, you know, here early game. You guys get the idea, all right? I don't have to cover it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, how long was this? This was 30 minutes. Uh, 30 plus 20, I was about 50 minutes. I talked a lot. Oh, well.
Oh, well, and this is going to be another amazing because uh, I'll see if you're curious, the way I decide who gets the amazing and who gets great in the thumbnail isn't based on how good they actually are. It's just based on how shit they used to be. So notorious shit mons will have amazing. Mons that were good before will get great. Um, maybe if it's like unknown or something, I would do like how insane, you know, like I'll get a like super unique word for that. But for the most part, it's amazing or great, depending on how good the mon used to be just to get, you know, clickbait bullshit. Like, oh, crap, Jinx is shit. Now it's amazing. You know, that kind of thing. Um, so I will be back tomorrow to more stuff, hopefully. Um, and hope you guys enjoyed this one.